In this video, we're going to discuss the tautological mechanism in the Fitch computer program that we use for this class. So let's get to it. All right, so what is the tautological mechanism, or TOTCOM? Well, it's a feature in the Fitch computer program that we use for this class that acts like a rule that checks to see whether one proposition is a tautological consequence of other propositions. So in the previous video, we had discussed how we can use the truth table to be able to determine whether one proposition is, is a tautological consequence of another. What you can think about this feature is doing is just performing that truth table and determining the, re the results uh, without actually us having to write out the truth table or determining the results. So it's just doing that for us. And just remember that because we're dealing with the tautological concept here, all that it's worried about is, to, is looking at the meaning of the logical connectives and what the logical connectives force in terms of truth-preserving uh, truth inferences or the lack thereof. Um, it's not interested in the meaning of the predicates, so it's going to ignore the meaning of the predicates. All right, so let's take a look uh, at some examples of TotCon being used in Fitch. All right, so let's take a look at this argument right here. So our, our first sentence says, either A is a cube or A is a dodecahedron. And our second premise tells us that it's not the case that A is a cube. Well, if our first premise tells us that one of these two, at least one of these two, is true, and this sentence tells us that this one is false, then the only sentence left over that could be true, the disjunct that could be true in this sentence, is A is a dodecahedron. So we can come down, type in A is a dodecahedron, and we come to our rule menu, and come to for consequence and tot for tot con. Okay, so if we now cite these sentences, what we're asking um, the Fitch computer program to do is to tell us whether A is a dodecahedron is a tautological consequence of these two propositions. And we see that they are. And we can also apply these goggles. And what the goggles do is they put the, um, these color blocks over the sentences because if you'll recall, Because you'll recall that tautological concepts aren't concerned with the meaning of the predicates contained within those sentences. They're just worried about the truth functional connectives. So it leaves our truth functional connectives out of those boxes. And so we can just read this as one option or another option, not the first option. Therefore, it must be the last option. We don't even have to worry about what the meaning of those predicates are, we see we can see that that's a tautological consequence. <clears throat> so those color blocks are being applied wherever that green one, since the green one was on A is a cube, wherever else A is a cube showed up, we got a green box there as well. The purple box wherever we had A was a dodecahedron, we got a purple box there as well. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this example, our first premise is that either B is medium or it's not the case that B is large. Our second premise tells us that B is medium. And it's making the inference that B, as a result of those two premises, that B 
isn't large. Now you might be thinking to yourself that this is a tautological consequence because the conclusion really does follow from the premises. But that's because it follows from the medium it follows from the meaning of B B medium. It follows from the predication of medium. It turns out that an object can only be one size, small, medium, or large. So if it's true that an object is medium, then it can't be large. But remember that tautological, uh, tautological concepts ignore the meaning of the predicates. They're only concerned with the meaning of the logical connectives. So if we come to our rule, tot con, we'll see that it does not come out to be a tautological consequence. And putting on the goggles, we can clarify to ourselves why um, 3 is not a tautological consequence from 1 to 2. So putting on the goggles, we cover up the predicates so we don't get confused uh, by relying on the meaning of the predicates. In which case, we can in 1, all we can tell is it's saying that uh, at least green, well, at least one of these two is true. Uh, which is that either green is true or purple is false. And 2 tells us that green is true. So if you think about a world in which green is true and purple is true, because green is true, one will be true because that will mean that this disjunct is true. And 2 will be true as well because it just says that green is true. But since purple is true, this would turn out to be false. So when we ignore the meaning of the predicates, um, as far as a truth table would be concerned, we could not establish that purple is false on the basis of those two premises. So that's why it's not a tautological consequence. It is, however, an analytical consequence of these two. In fact, not only is it an um, analytical consequence of both of those premises, uh, we don't even need the first premise. And we could still infer that B isn't large. And that's because analytical consequence is sensitive to the meaning of the predicates. And analytical consequence mechanism uh, knows that objects in Tarsi's world can only be one size and so since B is medium there's no way for it to be large. Alright that ends this video on the TotCon mechanism in the Fitch computer program. I hope you found it instructive.